Lord, help us today. Lord, we are grateful for who you are. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. I ask that you continue to speak to us, Lord God. Help us to receive your word. Move me out of the way and speak what you would have us to hear. Prepare the heart, Lord God. Help us have a heart to receive your word, the word of instruction, to build us up, to encourage us, to make us just better people, better people of God, to represent you in your heart. Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Kings chapter 4. First, I didn't really necessarily have a per se Mother's Day message. Um, you know, we started a new series last week. Uh, Whose slave are you? Okay, Whose slave are you? And then the Lord started honestly dealing with me this morning, kind of from a mother's perspective, if you will. Um, but I think it'd be beneficial to all of us. But it's still going to be within the series. Amen. And what you have inside of you and what you have is enough. Amen. What you have is enough. And it's enough to help you get out of your situation. All right? And so he just began to deal with me a little bit. Um, this will probably be a segue going into the rest of our series. Um, I want to just reiterate again as we kind of go through this, these, these lessons, if you will, that... Um, and he really wants us to be free of some things. He wants us to be free of some things. And some things, uh, life has a way of just bombarding us. And life is just life. You don't know what's going to happen sometimes. Um, you can never sometimes be prepared enough. You can do a whole lot of things that you want to, you know, to try to prepare. And then this happens. You know, one thing is for sure, life changes. Amen. Um, only one thing is steadfast and sure, and that's him and the word of the Lord. It's steadfast and sure. Life itself change. Um, one moment you can be feeling good, the next minute you're not feeling so good. Um, you know, you, as your body change, things change. As you get older, things begin to start happening. Um, sometimes just physically, sometimes mentally. Sometimes you start forgetting a little bit more as you get older. Amen. Anybody going to touch today? Amen. Amen. Got all, all the seniors said, Amen. Amen. You know, Brother Dotson, when he gets in and out of his truck, he make noises. I said, what's the noises about? He said, keep living. <laughs> you know, I mean, it ain't, he, he just don't get in. He gets in and he, he got some stuff with it. <laughs> I mean, I get in, you know, I try to just get in. He get in. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm like, you good? You ain't, wait till you hit it. And that's what he says, keep, just wait. And I understand, you know, because I, I am 49 and uh, I can get down on my knees. And when I get up from my knees now, it's kind of like, you know, you just, you just keep on living. Things take change. Um, you know, there's certain dynamics that happens in life that sometimes you just don't expect. And you, you, you can sometimes do the best you can, and then things will happen. Sometimes even in the midst of when we're on the good side of things, sometimes we, we can almost, uh, what I'm saying, start living it up. And as you're living it up, you think you're prepared for the downtime, but you lived it up just a little too much. Sometimes you can live it up and do things that begin to create a mess, and you not even realize it. And you don't know it's a mess until after you hit the downtime. And then you realize, I'm in trouble. Anybody ever had that happen? Amen. Got a t-shirt and a trophy. I got a plaque on the wall. <laughs> because sometimes it's, uh, uh, I don't know why our nature is like this. When we're stressed, when we're in pain, when we have suffering, when we have issues, there's something about that crushing that just calls us to seek God differently. We pray in a way we haven't prayed. I don't know about you, sometimes if I just begin to get too overwhelmed or I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed, when I'm going to go into prayer, I almost like, Lord, I just want to have one of these good crying out prayers. 
Like if I cry, it's okay. Why? Because even cry, even tears is a release. And I know because of his word, he knows everyone. Matter of fact, he knows them so much, he said, I'll take the very tear you cry and bottle it up. He said, and I'll store it up because I understand. And I hear you and I know. But sometimes, you know, there are times I've got, gotten lax, gotten lax or um, content. Um, it's okay to be content, but I want to have godliness and contentment. But sometimes I get content or uh, lackadaisical or get lazy when the pressure is off. When the pressure is on, I'm on. When the pressure is off, it's like I'm coasting. And it's a danger when you begin to coast because when you begin to coast, you're still living off of yesterday's success and yesterday's success will cripple your future. It will. Yesterday's success will cripple your future and hinder you from continually seeking him the way he wants to be sought. And, and when you begin to, uh, then, it, then it's like once something happens, then, you real, then you're almost wondering what's going on. Well, we stop pressing in the way we were pressing in when everything wasn't going right. And he also knows, and so sometimes it's just life. It's not necessarily even a setup by him. It's just life. He said, but just seek me and don't worry about everything else. I'll take care of everything else. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness, Righteousness and what? All these things, what? Shall be added unto if we seek him, he said, I'll take care of everything else. And we would and therefore we don't have to stress and worry. Oftentimes we begin to stress and worry because when we feel the pressure off, we stop seeking him. And we get ourselves in trouble. Amen. Amen. All right. Verse 1. Do you have it? Amen. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet Elisha unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bond men. Now that means Elisha must, must knew her. Must knew her husband. Had to know something. Because she said, You know how he feared the Lord. Um, it is very possible that he, he could have been a prophet. It's very possible that he could have been in the school of prophets because there was school of prophets where they began to be trained and, 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 and learn the things of God, learn how to hear God's voice, learn how to speak the things of God. Okay? Hey Amen. I just got to look. It was like, hmm? Hey Amen. Look it up in the Old Testament. Look it up. You don't have time to go there, but there was a school. And so here Elisha must have knew him because she said, you knew my husband. You knew how he served the Lord and how he feared him. Okay, but now he's dead and, and I got a creditor after me. Um, they're, they're, trying to get some, they're trying to get something from me and I don't have it. Verse 2. And Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thy handmaid hath not, not anything in her house save what? A pot, a pot of oil. What you have is enough. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow what? Not a few. Go get as many vessels as you can. Don't just get a few of them. Get as many as you possibly can, all right? Uh, verse 4, When thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee, Upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, shut the door upon her, her sons, who brought the vessels unto her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. The oil stopped. It just stayed right there. It's a very powerful story. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, pay the debt, and live in thy children of the rest. So he began to give her some instructions. And, and the Lord had begun to, begin to deal with me, honestly, this morning on this particular passage. And how her whole situation just changed out the blue. 
Everything's going fine. Husband's doing what he wants to do. Serving the Lord, fearing the Lord. And next thing you know, he's gone. But he must have had some, inquired some debt along the way. Uh, oftentimes you will realize as we kind of go along our way, we inquire debt. And, 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 and we have to be careful because debt will begin to keep us in bondage. Debt will cause you to do things you wouldn't normally do. The lack of funds, the lack of resources will cause you to do things you would have never thought about doing. The lack of funds have caused uh, women to do things they would have never thought they would have done. They've given themselves over to things they would have never done but because they didn't have it. And, and because, and, and in a woman, there was something, um, I, I think men have it too, but just something about a woman is going to do all she can to take care of her child. It, it just in a way that sometimes a father necessarily won't, he's going to, you know, you understand what I'm saying, but there's just something in a woman that just makes you, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a go. A woman almost fights you for her child. She'll fight her husband for the child. Come on now. You know, the husband may be right, but the woman is like, that's my child. Amen. Amen. Now, I ain't saying it's right that she fights her husband for the child, but I'm just saying she just might. Amen. Amen. Don't get quiet on me now. Because there's a something within that woman to go after to make sure her child has a, a true woman will make sure the child has before she has. Now, I realize there are some women who are selfish. There are some men who are selfish. There are some parents who are selfish. I don't understand, as a parent, how you eat, but your children don't. A true parent, a true father, a true mother are going to give to their child. before. If anybody goes hungry, I go hungry. Because I can give me some bread and butter and make it. But I'm going to give my child whatever I can give. There's some parents who won't necessarily do that. And we we in a day, and it's not necessarily anything new. It's just more of it. Why? Because the social and morality of the society is is on a decline. And and so it's it's, it's even kind of flipping even more where you have... I don't know if y'all, y'all seen that on the news or not where the woman took her little infant baby or baby and threw it over the ravine. And they just happened to see the baby or something wrapped up in the fire department had to get it and the baby survived, thank the Lord. Amen. Are you sick? What? There's a story in the Old Testament. Uh, King Solomon, when he comes in, to one of, you know, he was one of the wisest men, uh, the wisest man according to the word of God. God gave him wisdom that was just beyond our knowledge, okay? And he was using godly wisdom because, first of all, he had a heart at that time just to please the Lord. And the Lord said, what would I give you? What do you want? And when you look, when you begin to read it, he says, I just want to be able to know how to judge between your people. When you read that, he basically says, give me a hearing heart. Because when I have a hearing heart, then that means I hear you and then I can move. Well, there was a story where two women came and, 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 and they said, hey, uh, uh-huh. hey, this, this woman, we, we had our children. She rolled over on her child and killed it. And she's trying to say it's her baby. Uh-huh. And, he said, and the other one says, no, the child is my child. And the wisdom of God began to move on. He said, give me that child. He said, you take that child and you split that child in two. Cut that child in half. Give one half to the one mother and give the other half to the other mother. And one of the mothers said, sounds good to me. And he said, after that sounds good to you, that woman right there is not the mother. He said, because there's absolutely no way the real mother will ever let her child be cut in half. He said, but you take that child and give it to the real mother. And they begin to be astonished because of the wisdom of Solomon. That God beginning because there's no way that a true mother, the mother said, I almost have let the child go and be healthy rather than see it get split in two. When you're a real mother, you go to bat for your child. You go to bat in a way that others can't identify. Uh, it, it used to, I, I never, I mean, as a young man, and I got married when I was 19, and 
uh, Greg was already born. He was born in June. We got married in August. And but there's with all my children, there's just something that my wife just automatically had with the children that I never had. I didn't birth them. They're part of my seed. But I didn't birth them. There's just a closeness that a mother has that a father don't have. <laughs> uh, just, just as a side note, because it was, it was really, really good. You know, Brother Emmanuel said, we as the church are the mother for this world. There should be something within the church, something within mother that will go to bat for a soul like nobody else ever will. Because when I see a soul that's, that's heading down the wrong direction, there should be something within the church, and there is something within the church because the Spirit of Christ is in the church, and the Spirit of Christ begins to help you cry out for a soul in a way you can never do without the Spirit. Because, see, Satan, he'll begin to just... Uh, woos you and smooth you and he love up on you. Satan is trying to show you some love. This is love is faith. Satan will hold on, hold on to you. He'll hug you. He'll tell you everything going to be all right. He said, you just stick with me. I got you covered. And some of us, we didn't even realize that we just gave our whole self wholeheartedly over to Satan. Because we got some love and attention and didn't even realize his love and attention was just to kill us. Because he'll love up on you and love up on you and then turn on you and laugh and say, hey, what'd you think was going to happen? And at that time, you're so caught into it, you're so trapped, you don't even know how to break free. Because at least you got some love and attention somewhere. Ooh, hallelujah, I hear you, Lord. Amen. I'm sorry, that was a little side note, but he, I just felt he pushing me that way. And so you got to be careful. Um, I'm saying as a woman, but you also got to be careful as a man. Because you can begin to look for love in the wrong place. Most people look for love in the wrong place. And wherever the love comes from, that's what they gravitate to. Amen. Wherever the love happens to come from, they begin to kind of gravitate to the, that particular love. Some people feel like, hey, hey, this gang is my family. This is where I get, why? Because that's where they got love from. But, you know, uh, you, 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 we in a society, you got some, you do have some bad parents. Bad parenting doesn't give me the permission not to honor. I honor my father. I honor my mother. That my days may be long. Being, they brought me into this world, there ought to be just a certain respect I give. But if you're a bad parent, that mean I gotta respect your parenting. I just happen to have some pretty good parents, so I'm not, I'm not talking about your mind, so I'm just preaching right now. She's gonna be like, hey, I thought I did all I could. <laughs> no, you, you, you had, she's she done everything she Come could do. Uh, <laughs> but, but sometimes you do have some, but I am saying that because sometimes we feel as though, since I had a bad parent, I don't have to show respect. And when I begin not to show respect, I begin to open up some doors for some other things that we'll even get to even more in depth probably next week or so. But it begins to just create other issues in our life that we don't even understand. And life will just come and begin to change on you and you wonder what's happening. And I ain't forgot, honestly, we still got a creditor. I'm coming back to the creditor. And then when, you, when you realize you begin to just kind of live it up, live it up, then you get yourself in debt and get yourself overcharged in the area and don't realize that how it hurts you until your life situation changes. And here the lady, husband died, now she owes a bill. And, and, and they got, they got, she got the credit card people calling her on a daily basis. You said different numbers, huh? See, they, 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 she couldn't just say, I'm not going to answer that because I don't recognize the number. No, they're coming to get you. According to the Mosaic law, they had to pay it. If they did not pay it, that means he actually could come, take your children, and make them slaves until they pay it. Or until the year Jubilee when everybody was free and released. But that could be a long time from now because Jubilee didn't happen until every 50 years. Now, I understand some of our minds would say, you know what, Jubilee the next year anyway, I'm going to go ahead and man, get in debt today. Okay, amen. <laughs> amen. Trying to help you now. Trying to help you. 
I mean, it help us, Lord. Help our attitude, because some of us say, you know, I'm going to go ahead and file bankruptcy next year anyway, so I'm going to charge all I can this year, because Jubilee's next year. That's the wrong attitude, wrong spirit. Amen. Those things will come back and bite you. So whoever that was for, I don't even know who that was for, and I'm going to move on. Because somebody was thinking, I'm going to charge up some stuff, because I'm about to free myself up anyway. Don't do that. Your word is your bond. We ought to be people of integrity. If I know I'm going to file bankruptcy, and you may have to. You might be in a situation where you just might have to. But that don't mean let me go out here and charge everything I can real quick and add to that debt so that I'm, I'm just going to be free of it anyway. But not as a child of God. Okay, amen. amen. Okay, this is, I mean, if you can't handle natural and spiritual, this ain't the right church. <laughs> amen. Come on, yeah. But there was four things that she had to do. And I'm just going to read these real quick as he put it down because time's getting away. Amen. And y'all stop putting me on the clock, you know, when we <laughs> praise the Lord too long and then I get up and it's already like 15 minutes to one. <laughs> okay. Amen. 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 All right. First, she had to come and she went to the man of God and asked, what, what can I do? If you want an answer, you got to go to God. In, in that case, it was the man of God. Sometimes you may have to go to the man or woman of God, go to somebody to get some more help, get some more wisdom. God put people in your life to help you. Yes. Going to God is to always be our first thing is going to him. I need some answers. I need some direction. I need some help because right now, if I don't get no answer, if I don't get any help, I'm about to lose everything I have. I've worked too long and hard to lose everything I have. I put too much sweat and tears and prayer into losing everything I have because I came to a place now and my whole life is shifting and I'm getting ready to lose everything. Lord, I need some wisdom. And he says, I tell you what, what do you, what do you have in your house? She said, all I have, all I have, only thing I have is this pot of oil. And basically he says, guess what, that is enough. God has already placed enough in you to help you get out of what you can get out of. Amen. He says, all you need is just a little bit of faith. It's so small, you can't really, really see it. I should have brought my mustard seed out here. I have a mustard seed in my office with some tape. Because it's so small, you will lose it. He said, but if you got faith the size of this mustard seed, then you can say to this mountain, mountain be thou removed, and it will be cast into the sea. So there are some mountains sometimes that need to be moved, and sometimes I understand we can, we can get, even get excited about that, but mountain can be so many other things. That don't mean he really literally just wants to walk out here and start shifting the geography of everything. But like, I don't like, I don't like this tree, move that tree. I don't like this rock, move that rock. Lord, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like that. But can I look in the mirror and say, ooh, look at that mountain within me. Ooh, come on, come on. Can I look within my attitude? Can I look within my emotion? Can I look within my household? Can I see some things? You know what? I got enough faith in God to say, hey, I need you to shift this in me. Because if you don't shift it, it'll never go. And I don't got to have a whole lot, but I need this shift to happen because if it doesn't happen, then I'm going to have to deal with this mountain and this mountain is way too much for me. And so I need some help. And he said, all you need is just a little bit. What I place within you is enough. Grab the oil that I placed in you and then get to work and get busy. Then he said, go grab some vessels. Don't grab just a little bit. Go grab some vessels. Why is that important? It's so important. Hallelujah to God. Because the faith, the oil, the spirit he placed within you is not for you. It's not just for you. It's not just for your house. It's for other people. As you begin to go get vessels, the people are vessels. As you begin to pour into them, the oil that you have will continue to flow. As the oil flows, guess what? There's blessing in it. I put enough in you that you think this is all I got. I can't help another soul. I'm barely making it myself. He said, but you just grab a vessel. 
He said, I'll allow it to pour from you and you don't faint. And it'll keep on pouring. The only way it stops is when the vessels don't, when the vessels stop. Come on. When you don't have anybody else, then he said, then the oil stayed. But if you go ahead and get as many souls as you possibly can and begin to pour into them from the oil that I have, I, I don't understand how this is going to work, but you said grab some souls, I'm going to go ahead and do that. You said grab a vessel, I'm going to grab a vessel. Lord, you make this thing replenished because I can't see it. Do you know there's a blessing when you begin to bless others? Ooh, hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. There's been times I've been hurting. To be honest, I ain't want to talk to nobody. I just really want to be quiet. I really want to just sit in my house or wherever and think about the problem that I have. And think about how I'm going to get out of this. And I think and pray and seek and think and pray and seek. And it's like, Lord, ain't nothing happening. And then it just seems like somebody a call. And then they're not called on saying, Lord, Pastor, I just got a word. I just, God just began to deal with my heart just to send you a word of encouragement. He says he has an answer for you. I, it ain't that. <laughs> Lord, I, the Lord began to deal with me in the nighttime and said, just call the pastor because he needs you. It ain't none of that. They start calling and telling me all their problems needing some help. <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, like, I got, they don't, I got issues. <laughs> I got issues they don't even know nothing about right now. And they want to start telling me. And I got to sit there and listen. Do you know the oil begins to flow? Mm -hmm. The oil begins to flow, and the very oil that begins to flow, when I hang up, I can sit there, and sometimes tears that just begin to stream down my face because the oil that flowed out then begins to encourage me. Yeah. And I say, what I actually had wasn't even enough. I found myself ministering to somebody else and got ministered to. Come on. Come on. Because that's how a spirit begins to work. As you begin to pour out into others, it'll pour back into you. It's not for you just to hold to yourself. He said, what you have is enough. Quit sitting around just crying. Get somebody. Begin to pour. Man. Pour the oil. Hallelujah. So they had to be obedient to the word the man of God gave them. And they was obedient to the word of God and the man that gave, gave them. They got the oil, poured it out. And then the last thing, he said, then go sell it. Go sell it and pay your debt. Ooh. Go sell it and pay your debt. You, you watched the miracle of the oil flowing? That was a, it was a, that was a miracle. I don't, it doesn't say how many vessels they had. They just had plenty of vessels, and they're just pouring. It probably really should have ran out. It's kind of even like the one, the Shunammite woman with Elijah, and he said, make me first a cake, and you will live, and your son. Yep, yep. He said, you, you, you bless the man of God, and you do the thing of God first. The thing that you have won't fail. Come on, come on. How do you do that, Lord? How do you take a little and make a lot out of it? How do you take two fish and five loaves and feed more than 5,000 people? How do you, I don't know how you do that. God's multiplication doesn't work like mine. Because God's multiplication works by faith. And when faith jumps in there, he said, I'll take the very thing that seems like it's not a whole lot, and I'll just let it keep on going and going. I don't know how in the world I can give unto the Lord and pay my tithes and give and bring unto the Lord. When I know I need that to help pay my bill. But I don't know how, I don't even know because the numbers don't make sense. But at the end, I got chains left over. Are you serious? I am not saying chains, I ain't even talking about $1. I got 100 It's like that, it is not adding up right because when I first added it, I, I was even just really debating whether to even get my time. Okay, amen. Y'all might not struggle like that. I'm just talking about my own self. I'm going to testify a little bit because that's how I've worked before. Well, I've actually went through, and I had to double check and recheck my numbers because I'm pretty, actually pretty decent with numbers. I begin to add pretty quick. I begin to go back through, and I'm like, I must, I must have forgot to pay something. And I go through, I was like, everything still paid, and I got 100 left over. Let me check this again. Make sure this reconciles right. Because see, the natural man is tripping right now, 
Faith jumped out there and just did what it was supposed to do. That's what faith does. Faith will just jump out. The natural man begins to sit back and scratch his head trying to figure out how this thing works. He said, but when you do what I asked you to do, I'll take care of the rest. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what I know. I've done it more than once. I said, Lord, I don't know how these numbers are working, but the numbers work. And I, I ain't talking about, I, I, man, I, I found out I really forgot to pay something. No, no, everything was paid with some leftover. Because he said, what you got is enough. If you're just obedient. So he says, sell it and then pay your debt. You can't just not pay your debt. You owe it. God, God isn't just freeing us from all our debt. Spiritually or naturally. Amen. Sometimes paying your debt is saying, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes paying your debt is saying, please forgive me. Sometimes paying your debt is saying, I realize I made some mistake. Now, I was, I was doing pretty good. Some things changed. I wasn't planning on it. But I do realize I owe it. And here you go. Please forgive me. Pride says, you ain't got to give them that. Come on now. Help me. They don't. Why are you going to give them that? I mean, really, you did everything right. I mean, God bless you anyhow. He's blessing you. He's blessing you. Just because you got oil on me and you got and you blessed don't mean you don't pay. Come on. Mm. Right. Because the very thing you don't pay come will come back and bite you. With your blessing. <laughs> With your blessed self. <laughs> you bless, but you about to turn your blessing into a curse because you don't follow the instructions of the Lord. You go make that thing right because making it right allows you to have peace and rest. Those four things. First, she went to God. She listened and walked in obedience, went and got the vessels. After she got the vessels, they shut themselves in, allowed the spirit of God, allowed the oil just to flow to watch the miraculous things of God. After I watch the miraculous of God, I got to take the miraculous and go make myself right. After she went and made it right, then he said, now, then live in thy children of that rest. You're no longer under that burden. It feels so good to be able to walk over to Brother Sean and say, man, I know I owe you. I know I did this. That was cool. It was cool. I know I did this. Man, please forgive me. And it's really good when he said, man, that's all right, Pastor, man. I forgive you. We hug it up. I go home, go to sleep. Amen. It's bad when I know I owe him. I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to be nice with it. I'm like, praise him, praise him, John, praise him. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes home and says, Pastor know he owed me. I ain't said a word. Pastor, no, he did me wrong. So Ken said, Pastor, did Pastor make that right with you? Make that right with you? He's like, make, nah. He said, praise the Lord, that was it. <laughs> he said, he said, praise the Lord. Like, he ain't say nothing. He said, I mean, I seen y'all talking for a while. He's like, no, he's talking about Bible study. I was like, I just thought for sure he was going to go there. But he ain't make that thing right. And when I go home, I know it ain't right either. Well, I'm finding myself just a little restless, and I don't even realize it. I can't sleep like I used to sleep. Why? Because I got a creditor after me. Because I got some debt. I watched the blessings of God. I did part of it. If I went, I ministered to people, oil flow, shut myself in. But if I didn't do the last part and go pay the debt, the peace never comes. You can see the blessings of God, the miraculous of God. You can move in his spirit and not have rest. And he says, what you have in you is enough. I don't want to be a slave to the thing. When it, life just comes, I don't want to be a slave to that thing. I want that thing to be free. 
and I want to be right with him. And so I thank God for putting enough in me to first yield to his voice, hear it, and respond, and go pay my debt. And ladies and gentlemen, because I believe the fathers and brothers can learn from this just as well as the mothers. God says what he's already placed in you is enough. He gave every man a measure of faith. First that measure for salvation. Then he says add to your faith knowledge. And to knowledge virtue. To virtue patience. To patience kindness. To kindness long suffering. Meekness. I mean, he, he doesn't want our faith just to stay small. He wants our faith to increase. But it first starts with what he first placed in us. And I just want to build up off of that. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Let us stand. Let us stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We minister to one and encourage. We minister to bring light. We minister to just help. I, 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 pray, uh, I pray that I don't ever minister to try to bring condemnation to somebody. Because God's word convicts us to righteousness. But we have to be the one to respond. It's my job to minister, your job to receive it. Amen. 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 And, but what I tell you, I really honestly tell you in love. I have my own little style, I have my own little way. Some people like it, some people don't. You either love me or don't. <laughs> you have some people say you either love me or like me, whatever. It's just how God uses me and moves me. One thing for sure, his word is true. And he's trying to help us, and he wants us to be set free. He wants us to be at rest, y'all. He wants us to have peace. Sometimes we don't have peace because we just haven't followed all his instructions. We follow part of them, but not all. Amen. So, Lord God, we just thank you today. We thank you for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for mercy and grace. Thank you for your word that brings life, that brings help. Lord, it is your word that brings knowledge of sin. It is your word that brings knowledge of any wrongdoing. It is your word that begins to try us. It is your word as that fire that begins to try us as pure gold to bring up anything that is not like you. Lord God, we just pray, Lord, even today that if there is something, Lord God, within us that it comes to surface. Lord, we want to follow your instructions, Lord. We thank you for giving us enough to overcome whatever we need. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you for your oil. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the faith. It is your faith. It's not our faith. It is your faith that you give it unto us. Hallelujah. And we just pray that you continue to increase our faith. Bless each and every one that is here, each and every mother, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah. We thank you for the mothers today. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Hallelujah in the lives of the women of God, hallelujah, in this place and even outside. Help us, Lord God, even go grab vessels and begin to pour and to begin to minister unto other souls, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, God, that we just not grab a few, that we grab as many souls that we can, Lord, because time is winding up. And as we grab vessels, Lord God, your oil will continue to flow. Your, your oil only stops as we stop grabbing vessels. Lord, bring the vessels. Lead us to the vessels, Lord God, that we might pour Hallelujah, your oil on other souls, Lord God. And we take that and it'd be a blessing that we can come and be at rest and we pay every debt that we owe in the name of Jesus. Lord, hallelujah, bring peace, life and favor into your people. Help us as men of God. Lord, lead our families to be men of God, to be the priest of our home. Lord, keep us, Lord, each and every one. Help us, Lord, to take your word. We don't want to be a slave anymore. We don't want to be a prisoner of the Lord and not a prisoner of our flesh or of the enemy. So begin to help change us, Lord God. Begin to break the bands of wickedness off our souls, off our minds. Hallelujah. Lord God, and those, hallelujah, that do not have you, Lord God, tug at their heart right now in the name of Jesus. Change somebody today. Lord God, let them desire you and to walk in your knowledge and in your spirit. And we just thank you and we praise you.
And always let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.